Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism occurs when there is an excess of parathyroid hormone being secreted from the parathyroid glands in the neck. It is a prevalent condition seen in both primary and secondary care as primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common cause of hypercalcemia, followed by malignancy. The parathyroid glands sit in the neck, on the posterior surface of the lateral lobes of the thyroid. Most adults have four, which are commonly described in two pairs, the superior and inferior parathyroid glands, although their positions in the neck can be highly variable. Normally, the role of the parathyroid glands is to regulate serum calcium and phosphate levels via the secretion of PTH. The chief cells of the parathyroid glands are responsible for the synthesis and secretion of PTH, as well as the sensing of changes in serum calcium levels via the calcium sensing receptor. In response to hypocalcemia, secretion of PTH is increased. PTH then raises serum calcium levels by acting on various organs throughout the body. It promotes bone resorption and thus release of calcium into the blood. In kidneys, it stimulates calcium reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule. It also inhibits phosphate reabsorption, decreasing serum phosphate. In small intestine, PTH indirectly increases absorption of calcium by stimulating 1-alpha-hydroxylase, the enzyme that activates vitamin D in the kidneys. The subsequent rise in serum calcium then reduces PTH secretion, an example of a negative feedback loop. Hyperparathyroidism can be classified into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary hyperparathyroidism is the most common of the three types and is driven by a pathology of the glands. Here, one or more of the parathyroid glands is over-secreting PTH despite normal serum calcium, which over time leads to hypercalcemia. The etiology can be adenoma, hyperplasia, or may be associated with other conditions such as multiple endocrine neoplasias, or carcinoma. Next, secondary hyperparathyroidism is due to a disorder in calcium phosphate bone metabolism. In response to low serum calcium levels as a result of another condition, commonly chronic kidney disease or vitamin D deficiency, the parathyroid glands secrete PTH. This may or may not normalize serum calcium levels, depending on the underlying condition. Tertiary hyperparathyroidism may occur following a prolonged period of secondary hyperparathyroidism. In response to chronic PTH secretion, the glands may become hyperplastic and begin to secrete PTH autonomously. This can lead to hypercalcemia as in primary hyperparathyroidism, especially if the underlying condition impairing calcium metabolism is treated. Most primary hyperparathyroidism is sporadic. Risk factors include being a postmenopausal woman, having previous radiation exposure to the neck, and taking lithium. The condition may also be associated with inherited disorders such as MEN6. Secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism are associated with conditions affecting calcium metabolism, such as chronic kidney disease. For clinical presentation, typical symptoms of hypercalcemia include fatigue, polyuria and polydipsia, constipation, abdominal pain, vomiting, confusion, depression, bone pain, renal stones. The features of hypercalcemia may be remembered by the mnemonic, stones, bones, moans, and groans. For investigations, Corrected calcium should be measured in patients with suspected primary hyperparathyroidism, such as those with symptoms of hypercalcemia, osteoporosis or fragility fracture, or a renal stone. Serum PTH. This is helpful in suggesting a cause for hypercalcemia. Primary hyperparathyroidism will show raised or inappropriately normal PTH. A low PTH suggests a PTH-independent cause of hypercalcemia such as malignancy. Vitamin D urea and electrolytes, as advanced chronic kidney disease is a common cause of secondary hyperparathyroidism. Other relevant specialist laboratory investigations may include a 24-hour urinary calcium excretion test or calcium creatinine clearance ratio to exclude familial hypocalceric hypercalcemia. Corrected calcium is also referred to as albumin-adjusted serum calcium. This is used because only 50% of serum calcium is in the free ionized form, which is biologically active. 40% is bound to proteins such as albumin while 10% is bound to anions. Thus, serum calcium without correction can be spuriously abnormal in those with albumin abnormalities. Relevant imaging investigations include DEXA scan, to assess for reduced bone mineral density. Ultrasound of renal tract, looking for renal stones. Ultrasound of the neck, for preoperative planning and to identify adenoma. Nuclear imaging like Sestamibi scan, for preoperative planning and to identify adenoma. 
For treatment, medical management includes bisphosphonates, it does not affect serum calcium but do preserve bone density and therefore reduce fracture risk. Sinicalcet, a calcium-sensing receptor agonist, reduces PTH secretion and therefore serum calcium. It is used in patients with primary hyperparathyroidism in whom surgery would not be appropriate, has been declined or has been unsuccessful. Secondary hyperparathyroidism should be managed by treating the underlying cause. Sinicalcet may be used for patients in whom this fails or who are on dialysis. Phosphate binders and calcium or vitamin D supplements may also be used, for example in chronic kidney disease. For surgical management, curative therapy requires surgery such as parathyroidectomy. NICE guidelines recommend referring for surgical management if there are symptoms of hypercalcemia, end organ disease like renal stones, fragility fractures, or osteoporosis. Or corrected calcium level of 2.85 or greater. Complications of surgery include hypocalcemia, hoarseness and cough due to damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, bleeding, infection, or failure of surgery. That's all for this video. Thank you.